the stats, and the young people are fleeing from the church. When I started in my first career, I said, I want to work with adolescents. A couple of my colleagues looked at me and said, what are you, nuts? Well, I got a guy here, Justin Fatiga, who works with adolescents and young people with me. Justin, thank you for being here. Oh, great you, to be here, Dr. Ray, great to be here. You know that, that we both know Father Larry Richards. Yeah, unfortunately for both of us, right? <laughs> you, know, you gotta watch out for that character. He's juicy. He said you gave him trouble when you attended his school. Oh yeah, I tortured him a little bit. All right. Put my feet up on his desk one day. It's he now. Did yeah, he, he take that kindly? Yeah, yeah, he did. did he shoot him he off? He came in, he said, get your feet off that desk now, Fatika. I said, you say please. <laughs> oh, 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 Larry, oh, oh, oh. he grabs me by the neck, jacks me up on the wall. And he was speaking in tongues, so was I can't he okay? share that. And while he was <laughs> levitating? Yeah, yeah it was, this is PG. We can't <laughs> talk about that now, you know, PG. So How'd he, you come around? There's only one way, and it's what every young person in the world, it's what every one of us need, Jesus Christ. You didn't know you needed him. Didn't know I needed him, but guess what? I saw it within his eyes that there was something different. There was something more. I didn't have a purpose. I didn't have a mission. I didn't have a goal in my life. But when he challenged me, you see, I came from a, a good family. When you challenge somebody with sincerity of heart, with being authentic, people respond. I was bothered by him. I yelled at him. I said, people don't go to prep because of people like you. But that reaction, when somebody reacts, a kid, they don't react because they hate you. They react because there's something inside of them. He cared about that, you. He, yeah, he saw that. Yes. And he wrote me a letter that said, I don't like you. <laughs> yeah, he's a suave, <laughs> diplomatic sort of guy. And he says, you don't like me. I was like, I didn't know what amen meant back then, but I said amen. <laughs> And I said, but I pray for you by name every day. And I got that at Christmas time. And over Christmas break, I had a, a party at my house. And I made some big mistakes. And when I made those mistakes, I got some phone calls, you know, thinking you got to go pregnant, struggling in school, 820 on my SATs. Just questioning who I was, what my mission, what 820, my... 820, that stinks. Yeah, yeah I, beat Man, you, you I beat you by 40. Yeah, well, you can, <laughs> you can guess and get an 820. <laughs> Pretty much, 400 for your name, you know what I mean? And so I'm like, man, what am I going to do with my life? My sister goes to Boston College, I'm like, what's this all about? And all of a sudden, he's pushing at me, going after me. And uh, I had nothing in me. I wasn't pushing back anymore. And he's wondering what's wrong. He goes, who'd like to go on a retreat? I said, I'll go. He goes, oh, really? I go, yeah, I can teach you all about Jesus, Father. Let's go. And uh, I had that cocky attitude. He's like, all right. And he was praying, Lord, I don't know what to do. I can't spend 48 minutes with this kid, <laughs> let alone a whole weekend. <laughs> and uh, I went on the retreat, and it was from there. It was from there. I, I never, I prayed a prayer. I, I don't know if you pray a prayer once from your heart, God will take that. Like you wouldn't believe, and I prayed, I prayed, prayed, I said, Jesus, right from the Eucharist, I said, you died for me, I'll die for you. And I meant it. You see, we don't pray, pray enough prayers that we mean it with all our heart. We pray half a prayer. We got to pray with everything on. I said, Lord, you died for me, I'll die for you. The second thing I said was, Jesus, you get me through this, the selfish prayer. I said, I'll give you everything. How old were you? 17. 17? Yeah. And uh, the third prayer, I prayed, says, this was the crazy prayer. I don't admit it all the time, but I'll admit it now. That guy a little bit more direct said, Jesus, we're going to change the world. And I meant it. I meant it with every ounce of my being. So you roared out of there, all emotional, all fired up. Why didn't it die out? Because I had a motto like we did when we were kids. Like all of you are. I watched my grandmother who prayed. I watched my you know, priest that was an example, and uh, I really saw it. It was the models, and they were alive for me. You didn't mention my name. <laughs> so, and then I started going to daily mass, and there was some, like, I went, and there was these two goof troops there, and so I was like, I can't hang out with a bunch of goof troops at mass. There's just too You're many too cool of them. for that. Yeah, I'm too cool for that. So I had one choice. I either got to go get a whole bunch of them and get them there, or I leave. I took the tougher option. My name means fatica. It means work hard, until, you know, work hard until you're fatigued in Italian. Is that I, right? I said, I'm going after him. I went out in the hallway. 
I put one in a headlock, dragged These him These are kids? In. Yeah, kids. I was 17, so it was, you know, like, you know, you, you can't tell me for this. And uh, I took another one, dragged him in, and father's like, where'd you get all these guys? I said, I did the same thing you did. <laughs> he goes, what's that? I headlocked him in. He's like, good job. Keep up the good work. I go, all right, let's do it. We were a team, Father Larry and I, team. Every day, praying together, we started this uh, group called Fratris Tui. You know, a, a group of, of brothers to come together in love. And uh, every week we'd have prayer and pizza. You're five. a senior in high school. Yeah, junior as we started. Junior? Yeah, junior and senior in high school. And I, so you were a punk early. Yeah, a transformed punk. You know, Father always says, hey, he, he was a jerk before Jesus. <laughs> now he's just a jerk for Jesus. <laughs> yeah, so... And praise God, man. I've never, there's no, we gotta, we've got to be willing to give everything we got for these young people right now. Like, we can't stop the mission that God's called us on. They need our love, our tears. What if our, I don't want to hear it? It doesn't matter. What do we learn? Ask our missionaries there back there. What do you learn? The most important By the important way, you message. did have to bring your own cheering section. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These people came <laughs> voluntarily for me. I didn't drive the bus yet. Hey, they like the bills. There's not always, you know, it's tough there. You know, yeah. You know, it's well, tough. They'll turn on you. Blah, blah, Watch them. They'll turn on you. Oh, real quick. Real quick. <laughs> I like the Browns, so no better. Right? Hey, 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 yeah. <laughs> no better. Bills, Browns. But, you know, the most important message in the gospel is the Beatitudes 1 and 8. And what is it? The missionaries know. What is it? What's the most important message? Rejection. Rejection. When our, the immigrants, Italian, Irish, Polish, rejection wasn't something to get discouraged by. It was something to say, this is why I do what is good and what is right. Because I would be rejected for what was noble and what was true and what was virtuous. We watched our ancestors do that, and that's why we love our, our Polish immigrants, our Italian, the Mexican. We have to be willing to be rejected for what is good and noble and for them to watch us be mocked and ridiculed for what is good. And do it with love. Do it with our passion. Do it with our hearts, not with anger. There's folks out here, and you can tell when they asked some questions earlier, they're not sure what to say to their family members who have long since drifted away, who the grandkids have no contact with God at all. They don't know what to say. They're not sure to even approach them. My dad hasn't been committed for church since, since I've been a little boy. He, he went to St. Mattress. Some of you understand that, <laughs> all right? And, and, uh, but I have a bishop who's one of my favorite gifts in my life. He's an Italian bishop. You know, he knows that deal with Italians. And uh, his name's Bishop Frank Caggiano. And uh, I told the bishop, he says, what do you want from me? I said, I want one thing from you. I want you to meet my dad. It didn't matter what the bishop said. It mattered that his son desired for his dad to be loved. You see, Jesus didn't care who, who said yes or, or no to him. He had three people at his funeral. He was the most, what he was able to do is say, I care more about them than the response of what they give. We got to stop worrying about the response and we got to love with all our passion, with all our soul, in your own way. Whether it's through letters, whether it's through silent gestures, whether it's through prayer, sacrifices, mortifications, we cannot stop this mission to they win gotta souls. They got to know first and foremost you love them. Yes. You know what my dad said the next day? There's a lot of things that I really want to tell you, son, when I, I hang out with you. I go, really? He goes, yeah. It was tougher growing up as a Catholic than you'd think. And you know what? My father is tough and strong, but you know what's great? That my father wants to spend time with me because it's more important to have an opportunity than to have a problem. We have to want to spend time with people and desire that no matter what the rejection. And we've got to forgive those people that hurt us. That's what Jesus taught us. I, <clears throat> I didn't want to ask you back for a second session because <laughs> I'm not used to people with more energy up here than me. <laughs> okay? Sorry about that, Dr. Rick. I saw you sucking down these caffeine drinks in there before you... Yeah, let's go! 
That actually calms me down. Producer, my producer says, we got to get that man back, and I want this man back. Would you come back? Yeah, I'll come back. All right. Now, listen, we got coming up in the next segment, we kind of, you're Bailey Weck. We uh, talked to some kids from Walsh University in North Canton. We call it our morality reality segment. And we said, okay, what is it with you young people wanting to live together more than wanting to get married and commit for a lifetime? So you're going to hang around because after that, we're going to give these folks a chance to ask you questions, okay? Sure. But it is my show. You mind if I like say something every once? No, I need your help, man. Trust me. 